I'm just going to ask um, each of our uh, panelists to just say something about uh, what it was like to be an urban studies student at Penn during the era that you were here um, and how that sort of translated into your first uh, sort of career decision, first the one that you made. So, Corey, yeah. we'll start with you. I guess I picked the seat next to you, so I'm going to have to go first. Can you guys hear me okay? Um, so, I am probably the oldest one on this panel. Um, I graduated in 2001, which was a, um, a big year, right? Um, so, everyone in every single major in all of Penn was going into finance in New York. Um, so, right? I mean, maybe it was that, and maybe this is still the case, and maybe that's just a Penn thing. Um, and so, I was trying trying to not do that um, so I decided to stay and get my master's in urban planning so I actually stayed an extra year um, and I kind of for I, I knew that I wanted to do urban planning um, pretty early on I think I took Gary Hack's introductory class that was cross-listed with urban studies and um, like my sophomore year and decided I wanted to do urban planning so I stayed an extra year while everyone went to New York work in finance and I was here on campus on September 11th um, and and everyone was in New York and I was like thank God I didn't go to New York um, so my first job out out of graduate school in city planning was I moved across the country to Chicago because I was so nervous about New York being a viable economy and people were worried about jobs and I actually took a job with a real estate um, a real estate finance company um, I, I guess I was kind of still following the trend of everyone else doing finance, but I was, you know, I had an urban planning degree, and I was in Chicago. Um, and it was partly my fear of not knowing, no one knew what was going to happen to kind of New York City. So I took my first job in Chicago, absolutely froze my pants off after a year, and I was like, get me out of here. So I moved back to the East Coast after that first year. But I do think that that was a good decision because I don't think – coming from an urban planning master's program, I probably would have gotten hired in a New York real estate investment company. Um, so I took the, a job in Chicago, that, which positioned me to get a job in real estate finance in New York in 2002 or three, whenever that was. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a very weird time um, after 9-11. And I took the first job that I was offered because I just had no idea if there was gonna be any other offers. <laughs> so. I think I did on-campus recruiting through the Wharton um, and got that job offer in October and November and committed to moving to Chicago a year later. So, Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Joanna Visserajoy, and it's really great to be back. Uh, I think I'm the second oldest person on the panel, so we might have inadvertently <laughs> sat in age order, just <laughs> gravitated toward each other. Um, I graduated in 2004, so sort of similar timeline. I was a sophomore when 9-11 happened and actually went to New York for my junior year summer, so um, I guess different reactions. I sort of was drawn towards it <laughs> as opposed to away. I was really fascinated with what was happening, um, and it was a crazy time. But I think at that time, my classmates were also all either going into finance in New York still or doing Teach for America. It felt like it was one of those two things. <laughs> Um, and I think probably, you know, a familiar feeling wanting to be an urban studies major and wanting to do something a little bit different. I felt very committed to staying in Philadelphia, even though from New York originally, had a great time there my junior year summer, um, but really wanted to stick around and had been interested in law school for a while going into the major and had taken a lot of sort of cross-listed courses with um, legal studies and other things that had law in the title or racial justice or social justice in the title and felt like I wanted to get my feet wet a little bit before I took the plunge um, and took on the debt that law school entails. So I was really fortunate about a month after graduation to get a job as a family law paralegal at Philadelphia Legal Assistance here in Philly. Um, which is a sister organization to community legal services. If you're interested, I'm happy to talk about all the sordid history of how they became two different organizations and legal services restrictions that came down in the 90s and how we decimated legal services in this country as a result. But it was a great 
job to have right out of college. Um, I was handling large caseloads and really building on the education I got through the major. Um, spent my time in court and in communities and doing translation and all sorts of things, which was cool and fun and interesting. Um, I then got really burnt out after doing that for two years and like an early 20s adventurous person I decided to flee the country and live in Ecuador for a year and teach English which was just really fun um, but also convinced me that law was the right path and being an English teacher was probably not. So I applied to law school from South America, would not recommend that. Maybe now that the internet is stronger and better <laughs> it's a better thing to do. Um, and had really just loved my time in Philly so much that I was really excited to come back and started law school at Penn in 2007. Um, a very, 2006, no, seven, yeah, seven. Um, a very different time, uh, and I was in law school during the crash and happy to talk about what that meant for people who were heading in the direction of finance in the corporate world in New York and had the rug pulled out from under them. Um, but I was really sort of stuck with public interest, and I'll stop there, but come back to where that led me after. Hi, guys. I'm Jen Tittenfoss. I'm class of 2009. I'm originally from Philadelphia, and so I went to college in the place that I grew up in. So my post-college trajectory took me a little bit away from Philadelphia because I wanted to do something different. Um, but while I was here as an undergrad, I kind of had, like, a dual personality thing going on. I was really interested in arts and music, like a lot of you sound like you're interested in art, um, and also into urban planning, urban studies, and I guess urban economics. So um, in the summers, I split my time doing like urban type things, and then I was like working at record labels the second half of the summer, which is a really strange combination. So um, those two things don't generally work together. I hadn't found a way to make those things kind of work together. Um, but then my choices were kind of set aside when I was in college and the entire economy tanked while we were undergrad. Um, so our choices were more limited than other class years. Um, however, I did know that I was interested in pursuing the law as well. It had been kind of something I'd considered for a long time. But I knew that if I wanted to do that, I also wanted to get out of the Northeast and go try something different. Um, so ultimately, I accepted and went to law school in New Orleans, where I lived for about seven years, or six and a half years, and I just moved back here in August. Um, so while I was in law school in New Orleans, I was pretty active in different um, recovery projects um, and sort of urban finance initiatives run by both the state, the city, and other private organizations. Ultimately, I decided that I'm a Philly girl, and I missed Wawa, and <laughs> decided that the time had come. I came back to Philadelphia in August, and I work for a pretty sizable law firm here in Center City, and I work in their real estate and finance group. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Thanks, Elaine, for having me uh, on the panel. Uh, I'll give a bit of my background, and I think um, that will help address the initial question that Elaine had around um, how urban studies influenced me and how it's influenced some of the things that I've been doing. Uh, so I, too, am originally from uh, Philadelphia. Growing up, I spent a tremendous amount of time actually all across the city um, teaching tennis. And uh, that experience was very formative uh, for me throughout middle school and through high school. Uh, it led me to develop an interest in urban affairs and urban issues, which brought me to Penn uh, to major in urban studies. When I was at Penn, um, I had this interest in urban policy, but at the same time uh, became interested uh, in the role that economics has to play in the development and execution of urban policy. And so uh, I de decided to pursue a dual degree with Wharton. So I was an urban studies major in college, and I also uh, was studying economics uh, in Wharton. Uh, and actually through my uh, field work that I did through herbs, um, classes that I took through herbs, um, and then some internships that I just had throughout my undergraduate time at Penn, I developed a bigger interest in the intersection of business and government. And, uh, what, and I ultimately did end up going into finance um, in 09 when we graduated, uh, which was really interesting. Um, but for me, my interest was really in, in thinking about and figuring out um, how capital is formed, um, who influences capital, or how it is influenced. Um, really with this idea that if I could learn about um, how to raise tremendous amounts of capital and ultimately 
uh, figure out how to steer it and invest it in businesses and communities that really need it, and for me it was interest in um, urban areas, that that could be really powerful. And so that's what I did. So for the last um, six years since undergrad, I worked in financial services, predominantly with investors, all different types of investors, pension funds, endowments, foundations, sovereign wealth funds, um, et cetera, to think about, to learn about um, how they uh, decide to invest um, a tremendous amounts of capital. Uh, after a few years of doing that, um, I decided to come back to Wharton. So I'm actually in the MBA program uh, here at Wharton. Um, it's been really exciting for me because I've gotten to sort of step back and reflect on how I can uh, further pursue some of these interests and professionally um, in eco economic development and urban issues. And so now I'm actually working with uh, University City District. Um, uh, next year, I'll actually be at the Kennedy School um, at Harvard studying uh, public policy as well as urban, with a focus on um, urban policy. Um, but I'm happy to speak about anything related um, to uh, financial services. Um, and if you have a passion for herbs, how you can combine that with an interest in uh, financial services as well. Uh, <laughs> <thanks>. <laughs> uh, my, 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 my name is Gabriel Mondujano. I, I believe I'm the third oldest person on the panel. Uh, I graduated in class of 2005. Um, uh, gosh, so I think what Herbs was in 2005 to me, um, I remember um, I was the only person who showed up to class on the day the Iraq war started. Um, and um, uh, and that was because I was at my other classes all day and everybody else was at a protest. <laughs> um, uh, which, which, you know, so I, I was also a dual degree uh, person, so I, 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 uh, I was you know, taking, you know, I, I did, you know, the classes at Wharton were completely undisturbed and, you know, the urban <laughs> studies classes, you know, nobody showed up from, it was Mark Stern and I, you know, <laughs> talking about statistics for about 15 minutes. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, um, uh, then everybody else showed up. Apparently, you know, the protest got out late or something. But I, you know, I, I, I guess the reason why I bring that up is, I, I mean, I, I loved the community because I, I thought that there was a, a really cool um, diversity of interest. I think uh, at, at at some level that mirror, mirrored um, my my own diversity of interest. Um, you know, um, sort of in, in terms of uh, just you know being able to explore a lot of different things. Um, I was really interested in, in urban development. Uh, I, I was a real estate concentrator at Wharton. Um, I also had a really big interest in Latin American development. Um, and so, so like cities and Latin America were sort of my, my, my two interests. Uh, I, after I graduated from, well, I should say, I, I took a job, or a, I was, my, my junior year internship was at the Enterprise Center, um, CDC, um, and so I, I was an intern there, and then I, I worked there during my senior year. Um, and uh, until I went to grad school in England um, and did one degree in Latin American um, politics and another degree in, in um, land economy, which is what they call urban studies at Cambridge. Um, and, um, uh, and then came back, uh, went to work, back to work at the Enterprise Center for two years, um, had a, a, a sort of a really great experience uh, at, at sub-levels in working in community development. Um, and, and also, I think, uh, had a couple bad experiences, you know, sort of learning the limits and, um, you know, structural failures of the nonprofit sector. Um, so I also ran off to Latin America. <laughs> I took a job in Mexico for a year, uh, working at a place called the Center for Sustainable Transport, which advised um, Mexican government on public transportation issues. Uh, again, felt like had a couple really great experiences, but also was sort of learning about the limits and, and structural failures of the nonprofit sector. Um, and so when I came back to the United States, I was really interested in social enterprise and decided to start a company um, to create jobs for vulnerable adults. And so that was about five and a half years ago um, and um, I'm still doing that today, so. Hello, so my name is Melanie Young and I am a recent alum. I graduated last year in 2015, <laughs> making me the youngest person on this panel. And I'm also a Philadelphia native, so I think I'm the third Philadelphia native on the panel. Um, so I'm, I'm still getting used to my alumni experience, um, but since I graduated last year, a lot of the things that were happening in the nation, you also experienced with me. But I'll also say a few things that were, um, that stuck out to me as 
when, in the world when I was a student here. So I started in 2011, and that was the year where there were the Occupy Wall Street um, protests happening all around the nation. And I remember being a freshman and thinking about, like, oh my gosh, what is going on? And then it just seemed to be that, like, the rest of my time here, it was protests happening each year. I mean, there were Ferguson protests and the whole Black Lives Matter movement really um, made a mark on my time here at Penn. Um, and that was also juxtaposed. So I graduated from high school in 2011, and the year after that, um, the school district hit a really huge budget crisis. Um, and so the experience of high school students in the city when I was in college was very drastically different than the experience I had as a Philadelphia public school student. And um, so I was in college um, as an urban studies major, also taking classes in the Graduate School of Education or classes that were cross-listed with G um, GSC and urban studies and hearing about the budget cuts and learning about the policies behind them and the school closures, things that I just did not experience when I was a student in the Philadelphia School District. And so all of that combined, I really saw myself as passionate for educa about education, but I also began to see myself as an activist. And so currently I am now in the Graduate School of Education. I'm pursuing a master's in education. I'm also getting certification for teaching, so I'm currently also teaching at um, Masterman Middle School. So, yes, that's it. Um, so out of curiosity, how did you get your first jobs and how did you market the things that you learned in urban studies to get it? I can, I'll start, I'll answer that question. Um, so, first job out of law school, I guess that's probably a good one. So my first job out of law school was with a medium-sized firm in New Orleans. They were actually based in Houston, but they had an office in New Orleans. And I knew that I was interested in real estate, um, and I knew I wanted to work in real estate and, and work with developers, but also land use and zoning, which is a big component of my work. And so the first thing I did when I was starting to look for jobs in law school, you kind of do it during school, right? Your second year is sort of a big summer, so you can get hopefully get an offer. Um, and I ultimately accepted it, an offer from this firm that summer. And um, oddly enough, the managing partner of that firm is a Penn alumni, and his son went to Penn. He was kind of contemporaneous with you, I think. Um, but so the Penn connection was very important. Um, so one thing I will say to all of you is like your network is really great. Make sure you take um, and make great use of it. It's an important thing. Um, but so I think having a pen connection was a good thing. Also identifying a really narrow area, a more specific area that I wanted to work in, especially as a lawyer, helped me find jobs more than my other classmates who might have been more broad in their, their look. I think the one, well, the one thing I'd add to that is just, uh, I think it's always important to have both a, a, an interest, a field of interest, and, uh, and a skill set. So, um, and, and, um, so, so urban studies is a great field of interest, and there's a, a number of uh, skill sets, but particularly if you are um, uh, looking to work at a place that doesn't traditionally hire, um, like, you, you know, like, like they don't have an on-campus presence, you know, it's not like part of their pipeline to hire, you know, um, undergrad, you know, people straight out of undergrad. Not that they wouldn't, but it's just not part of their, their thing. Um, then you are like, I'm, I'm interested in cities and I know how to make GIS maps, or I'm interested in cities and I can make a financial pro forma of a real estate project, uh, or I'm interested in cities and I can teach. I mean, you, you know, it's important to have sort of like that, that sort of, you know, technical skill set because ultimately an employer is going to hire you for both. I mean, there, there's, you know, they, they want to know that you have an interest and an expertise in the subject matter, but ultimately they need to like assign you to a, an, an item on their budget and 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 that rely you know relates a lot more to like oh are you in the development department writing grants or are you in the research department making maps or are you i mean like so, so just you know figure out which one of those skills you want to go to market with too yeah i'm happy to add that um and i definitely agree with what's been stated so far uh so for me i went through the on-campus re recruiting for uh, finance. Uh, actually, all of my interviews, or at least the interview with the firm that I ultimately went to, it was all about herbs. So my whole, um, really, that's all we talked about. They had a lot of interest in herbs. So I think one takeaway from that is I, I think the, one of the 
great uh, benefits and powers of uh, majoring in urban studies is that it's a really interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary um, uh, type of field. And so for me, as I mentioned, I had this big interest in understanding um, how to go out um, and market to investors and how to raise um, money from investors. And uh, the summer experience that I had that actually overlapped with my field work for herbs is working in uh, Manhattan for the Manhattan Borough President in New York. Um, and he actually uh, serves as a trustee on the New York City employee of retirement system, so the pension fund for all of the uh, city employees uh, in New York. Um, I spent uh, my summer there just learning about how uh, that board thinks about um, investing. And that's where, interestingly enough, um, uh, I realized um, how influential public sector capital is um, even in financial services and in the financial sector. And I think that was a big realization for me. That was something I talked a lot about um, in my interviews when I was looking for a full-time role. And I actually think that um, me bringing that passion for this particular um, subject area uh, was a differentiator and ultimately um, you know, helped me a lot in my uh, recruiting. I'll just add, so I did sort of the old school traditional process of there was no LinkedIn, as far as I can remember, or Idealist, or any of these cool things that you have now. Um, there was some job board, maybe at Career Services, I don't know, but I saw a posting for paralegal, um, not something I thought I would ever do, but at this really interesting organization in Philadelphia serving uh, only low-income Philadelphians, and not just low-income, but people living 125% uh, below the poverty line, so the poorest Philadelphians. And I was also a Hispanic studies, you know, Spanish minor. So I was able to go into the interview, and even though they didn't generally hire um, people right out of undergrad, I don't think they'd ever hired a Penn undergrad with an urban studies major before, but I said I care deeply about um, low-income Philadelphians. I understand many of the issues, or I'm, you know, seeking to understand many of the issues that they're dealing with on a daily basis, and I can speak to many of them in Spanish. And that was enough to convince them to take a, a chance with me um, and to give me this really amazing learning opportunity for two years. And you know, I, didn't, I knew what I kind of wanted to do roughly as I was approaching graduation, but I, if I remember correctly, my interview was during like senior week or whatever the equivalent of that is, um, right before graduation. So I was running around and then, you know, going downtown and buying my first suit and going to this interview. So, um, you know, things happen. And it's, it sounds very trite and cliche that things, you know, work out. But there are all sorts of interesting opportunities that might pop up and ways that you can market the great skills that you're getting in this program. Yeah, and then the one thing I would just add is it might not be your first job out of school that you're able to utilize all that you learned in urban studies. So, um, you know, I kind of went into real estate finance, which was not what I had necessarily studied in urban studies or urban planning. I, I knew I wanted to be in real estate development down the road, but thought that was a good route to take. And then later on, when I worked for the city of New York um, in economic development, it all kind of came back, and thankfully I still remembered it. Um, so, you know, I just would say it doesn't have to, you know, don't, don't get so caught in the first job. That can be a stepping stone to kind of where you want to go thereafter. Another question. 